calcium. Everyone knows what it is. Very few people know what it does in the garden to increase plant growth, increase success, keep your plants pest and disease free, as well as help you to have more success. See, calcium, everyone talks about how it helps with the strong bones and the nails and you know, good cognitive function, but very few people talk about its importance in the garden. And in my opinion, calcium has more importance in the garden than it does in your body. Now, don't get me wrong, calcium is great in the body, but plants need more calcium than we do. And why might you ask? It's because of the cell structure. Animals and humans, we don't need rigid cells. We don't need rigid cells because we're moving and we get our energy from the food we eat. However, plants, they get their energy from the sun, meaning they're living solar panels. If they are not, if they're not straight out and they're drooping, they're not efficient and they cannot generate as much energy. And that means that plants that have more calcium are going to be stronger, more rigid, they're gonna be able to generate more energy from the sun, and also they're going to be stronger and thicker, meaning that pests can't uh, penetrate the leaves with their small teeth, things like white flies and aphids won't bother your plants nearly as much. See, calcium is actually a growth regulator. Scientists in the 60s started studying the, the benefits of calcium on plants because calcium, they found, was, uh, was abundant in certain soils and lacking in others. And they found that in soil where they, they fertilized exactly the same with nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, all other minerals, but the calcium was the only thing they didn't add or supplement they found that the, that the growth was increased up to 300%. And that is because calcium is the structure of the cell. This could be the most important thing you hear in your garden all year. And that is because calcium is lacking in so many people's garden. Calcium is a naturally occurring element found in all living things. However, it does become depleted over time. If you're not readily giving your plant all forms of calcium, that means fast acting and slow release, your plants are going to be deficient at some point in time. Calcium can be found in things like compost, worm castings, lime, gypsum, eggshells, even things like milk. If you put those ingredients in your soil, your plants are going to have something that they can take from at any time of the year to help plant growth. I like to think of it like this. If you're building a house and you, you want to build that house in as fast as possible, as to, uh, you know, fast as possible, in the shortest amount of time, you want to make sure that all of your building materials are on site. You don't want to have to wait and halt your project so that you can order more building products because the fact of the matter is the, the, the longer you're waiting for those building products to come back onto your site, the longer it's going to take to finish your project. And you can think of a finished project as being a fully mature, fully producing plant. And your plant needs that calcium as its building materials. It's the lumber, it's the steel that holds the plant together. So when you have a calcium deficiency, it's essentially the plant saying, all right, we're half built, I need some more building materials. But if the calcium is there in the soil, it can readily take it as much as the plant can grow. That means instead of waiting on calcium, it's waiting on nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, other micronutrients, meaning that if you have a good soil that's very fertile and it's not lacking in calcium, and it's also not lacking in your other minerals as well, like your macronutrients, your nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, it means your plant can grow faster. And that's why scientists found that Calcium did regulate plant growth up to 300%. And that's why I'm so stoked about this fact because I see so many gardeners completely tossing calcium off the wayside thinking, oh, it's just a little micronutrient. It's not that important. In my opinion, it may be considered a micronutrient, but it has macro effects on the success of your garden solely for the, the role that it plays. Sure, it might only make up about 4.5% of all living things, but that 4.5%, you have to look at where it's being placed. Because although it might not be placed in the most important parts of the plant, in my opinion, it is the most important part of the plant because without a structure for that leaf to, to hold itself up, like I said, it's not as efficient, meaning your plant's going to grow less because it cannot generate enough energy and sugars through photosynthesis from the sun. And another thing is when it can have all the available calcium, it actually is, is more pest resistant, meaning it's stressed less, meaning there's less pest pressure on your plants. Years that we have used lots of calcium in our soil, 
We use Trifecta Plus as our source of calcium because it has all forms of fast acting and slow release calcium. And years that we've used calcium or used Trifecta Plus, we have had not only the strongest plants, we've had the thickest leaves. We get comments all the time. People will say, Luke, your leaves look unbelievably thick. They're like folding in on each other. They're curling. That's because there's so much calcium in the soil that the leaves don't even know what to do with it. They just keep uptaking it saying, man, I'm loving this. And the leaves are so thick. And that is a big reason why we don't have hardly any pest problems. Another thing that when you add calcium to your soil, it prevents things like blossom end rot. See, many gardeners have, uh, have great soil, but over time the calcium leaves, and that's because I don't see enough gardeners amending their soil. Use things like compost, or fertilize with things like trifecta, or gypsum and lime, like I said. Those are really inexpensive for the, the bigger effect that they have on your garden. They're so uh, nominal in cost, and yet they can save you hundreds of dollars in hassle in, in fertilizing because a lot of times you don't always have ma macronutrient deficiencies. It's calcium deficiencies that slow your plant down and people say, well, hold on, I must have a nitrogen deficiency because my plant's not growing as fast. Well, again, that plant is probably waiting for the calcium, even though you have lots of nitrogen because scientists have actually found as well that when you have about 5% of organic matter in your soil, that organic matter will provide enough nitrogen, available plant available nitrogen once it's broken down to sustain plant life for the entire year. That's only five, that's only five percent. That's four, that's five percent of organic matter. That means you can take the entire soil, and if you just have five percent of that being things like compost, you have enough nitrogen to sustain plant growth. Now, another thing as well is having again the available forms of it always, and I, I go back to this, always go back to your things like calcium, uh, your, your fast acting calcium and your slow release calcium. These can be things like eggshells and combining those things like fast acting calcium, like lime. Put both of them in the soil at the, at the beginning of the year. I see so many gardeners taking it and applying it at different points of the year. And that's great. If you can tell when your plant needs it, that's fine. In my opinion, I want to be ahead of the game. I want to put it in the soil before the plant tells me I need it or it needs it because then there's no waiting process because in order for me to know the plant needs it, it has to show me some signs of stress. It has to show me that it's slowing down instead of just saying, I've got it, let's go. So with that being said, I hope you all take this information into the garden. I hope you grow big or go home with it and share with your friends the miracle of calcium because I can tell you what, it has changed our garden for the better. It has been a realization that even though it's such a simple realization, it has made all the difference. And I can safely say that calcium is one of the most important, in my opinion, elements in the entire garden. And that might vary based on the source you, you, know, you talk to, but me, I've, see the, I've seen the results, I've read the studies, I can tell you that it is not a joke. And if you want a healthier, uh, a happier garden, a healthier garden, a more pest-free garden, one that is fast growing and quick to mature to provide food for your family, do not exclude calcium. And I, one thing I wanna end on is that you don't have to worry with calcium. Unless you're adding things like lime that can lower the pH, or I guess raise the pH, you wanna make sure that you do not make the soil too alkaline. That can affect plants negatively as well. And that's why if you add a little bit of it, make sure you're adding other things like gypsum or eggshells that can, you know, the plants can take up that calcium from the lime right away, but don't add too much of it. Any other form of calcium is great. In fact, that's why gypsum is one of my favorite forms of calcium because it's not only plant available, but it does not affect pH at all. You can add tons of calcium, uh, tons of gypsum to your soil. It will provide tons of calcium. And to be honest, you can provide up to 10% of your, uh, of your fertilizing being just calcium source and your plants will not care. Try that with things like nitrogen, try that with things like, like uh, phosphorus or potassium. It can actually burn your plant if you have things that high in nutrients. Whereas with calcium, because, it's a, because it is a very stable element that doesn't have uh, you know, an over enriching properties like nitrogen does, if it's too rich in nitrogen, you can burn your plants. Without, you know, with calcium, load it on 
and the plant will simply take it when it needs it. And so also a final thing is that calcium, uh, you know, it does take a while to break down. And that's why I suggest to put it in the beginning because you know, if you put eggshells on in the garden, a lot of times they won't be plant available until late summer or even next year. Sometimes they take around two years to break down. So just keep that in mind, grow bigger, go home with this information. I hope you all enjoyed. I hope you learned something new. And as always, this is Luke from the My Gardener channel reminding you to grow big or go home, like this video if you found it helpful and share it with your friends because that always helps us grow big as well. All right, hey, we'll talk to you all later. This is Luke from the My Gardener channel reminding you to grow big or go home. See ya.